just relating to the Customs Union Customs Agreement. Now, since the referendum, I've always said I'm not wedded to the Customs Union. I actually don't care what it's called. So long as we stay and achieve as close to what we have today, which is frictionless trade, borderless barrier-free trade with the EU, I don't care whether it's a partnership agreement, amendment, I really don't care. But I take great comfort that when we couple it with the successful Northern Ireland amendment yesterday that we've already spoken about today, that to me is the ultimate backstop that there is, a commitment to avoid a hard border in Ireland, given that there appears to be no solutions for technology whatsoever, tells me that somehow, in all of this, we will come through with a customs agreement union partnership. So actually, I think the bill is in a better shape than it was when, we first, um, when it was first drafted. We now have on the face of the bill, um, potentially after today, customs union or agreement. We do have no hard border in Northern Ireland. So I, for one, am pretty happy with the direction. I think we are finally starting to get there. And actually, we do have the Trade and the Customs Taxation Bill coming back next month. Let's see how the Prime Minister gets on at the end of this month, because there will be uh, undoubtedly more opportunities to debate that. And certainly many members on this side of the House will not shy away from doing that if we need to. Because frankly, we can't deliver the Good Friday Agreement and ensure no hard border in Northern Ireland without a customs agreement or partnership. Staying on the customs theme, Amendment 51 to negotiate continued access to EEA. This, for me, plus joining EFTA, I see as an actually quite a possible and sensible lifeboat. Yeah. It's far inferior to a bespoke customs arrangement that I know the Prime Minister is determined to seek. But if she doesn't, we need it as a plan B. Now, my name is already on the EEA amendment for the Trade Bill. And it's fair to say that I'll be keeping my name there and abstaining today as a line in the sand to say that we shouldn't throw it out, we need to keep every possible option on the table, because I, for one, am not prepared to plunge into the sea with absolutely no lifeboat whatsoever. And the majority in this House and the British public do not want no deal, no lifeboat yeah, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It would be absolutely economic suicide. Now, EAFTA is not my first preference, but it is a potential plan B, and we will be absolute fools to write it off. So let's get to the Trade Bill, see where we are, see how the June Council goes, and potentially that might be the lifeboat that we all should grasp with both hands. And finally, I want to speak briefly on Amendment 24, uh, essentially the Dubs Amendment. And the Government has come a long way here, in large part to the leadership of Lord Dubs and the amendment tabled by my right honourable friend for North Normanton, Castleford and Pontefract. And I'm pleased that they've come a long way and enshrining in law that um, aunts and uncles will extend as family members for children refugees to come to is huge. And nobody could be prouder of what we've achieved as a country um, in Syria and the region. An unparalleled financial level of support. We've taken large numbers of refugees. The fact that we're prepared to take this Dublin legislation that we would lose if we come out of the EU is massive. But whilst I can't begin to imagine the hell and the trauma that these children and families will have gone through, I can imagine that family would be everything. So I still do not understand the Government's position on the final part of yeah. my Honourable Members for Pontefract's amendment. Yeah, yeah. And I'd be interested if the Solicitor General would perhaps um, look at that again. Why can we not extend to siblings under the age of 18 Time. that fi final part of the jigsaw yeah. in the Dubs amendment? Time. Because it affects so few people, yeah. so few children, but to me that's competent government and legislation, when we can legislate for the smallest detail and have a real effect on individual people's lives. This amendment is near perfect now. I would urge the Minister and the Government to look at this again. And in a similar way to EEA, Customs Union, we have the Trade Bill coming back. We will have the Immigration Bill coming as well for this. So if we don't succeed today, be under no doubt that there are members on all sides of this House that will push hard again for that because to me it's a very obvious and missing part of the jigsaw. So one small tweak, and I believe we could make a tremendous difference, and I would urge the Government to look at that again. Yeah, yeah, well, sir.